Joining us now is Jerry Filipados. He is the attorney for former Fox News producer Abby Grossberg, who is suing the network. Mr. Filipados, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. I know we have a slight delay, so I'm going to get right to the questions. And I think a lot of people would like to know a bit more about how and why Ms. Grossberg made these recordings. Good evening, Alex. Thanks for having me on. Uh, let me just step back one one second and, and say, uh, in answering your question, that we didn't actually uh, play the tapes in court today. Dominion's attorneys did. We turned over uh, the the recordings to Fox's attorneys, thinking that at some point they would get to Dominion. Uh, and when I say we, I, I mean. Abby, when she was asked to by Fox's attorneys, and it turned out uh, months and months later, uh, we noticed that that uh, the recordings weren't anywhere in the record as it became unsealed, as as the papers were filed for the summary judgment motion. So ultimately, uh, we felt that we had to come forward and and provide uh, that evidence, uh, or at least n let the court know that we have that evidence, uh, as we did in our filing in Delaware. Abby has two lawsuits. One is in the Southern District of New York that is really the heart of her dispute, uh, which, which alleges um, a very toxic and horrific work environment that she was subjected to, uh, not so much at Maria Bartiromo's show, but when she left um, uh, Ms. Bartiromo's show and went on to Tucker Carlson's show. It's also significant that um, the coercion that we allege that uh, occurred during her deposition preparation occurred as she was transitioning from Ms. Bartiromo's show to Mr. Carlson's show. Uh, and the we see the two issues and the two lawsuits linked. The the lawsuit in Delaware alleges the, the vast conspiracy to essentially uh, cause uh, Abby to, to uh, Defame herself by 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 uh, with a transcript that was coerced out of her, and which she wasn't afforded the opportunity to correct uh, until we filed the lawsuit. And the uh, the the um, the lack of of of, of full disclosure in the transcript uh, became apparent to the world. Um, and then there's a lawsuit in in uh, the Southern District. And the two are related because really we allege that Fox News uh, scapegoated. Uh, Abby and to a degree Ms. Bartiromo uh, when they finally found out that uh, <laughs> there was going to be liability. It's very telling that um, the the order from on high came down not to have Mr. Giuliani and uh, Ms. Powell on any longer on any show, including Ms. Bartiromo's, uh, the day that the Smart Tech lawsuit, which is another defamation lawsuit that's uh, percolating along in New York, uh, I think for $2.7 billion, uh, dropped and Fox became aware of it. So let's let's talk a little bit about the the recordings and and how she came to make them in the content and and why you think, given the current suits here, uh, the current complaints, why you think Fox News did not make these available to Dominion during the discovery process. Well, uh, I really I can only speculate as to what is in uh, Fox News's mind and the minds of their attorneys. But uh, I'll tell you, you know, they have a lot of lawyers uh, litigating the case uh, in Delaware, the the uh, defamation case that uh, Dominion has brought. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think among them, the practitioners there have uh, over 150 years of, of uh, experience. And uh, it's it's really unlikely that they really dropped the ball and just forgot to turn this obviously relevant uh, evidence over. It's more likely that they've been hiding the ball, as we've alleged all along. Uh, and the reason is obvious, because, uh, I, I mean, I don't need to make Dominion's arguments for them. They're doing pretty well. But uh, it seems to me that uh, that these tapes go to the heart of the issue that's been left for the court. Uh, for the jury, rather, in the uh, Dominion case, which is whether there's actual malice. One could even argue that if if um, Dominion had these these tapes, and there, by the way, uh, there there seem to be other 
evidence that was also withheld from what I've been reading just uh, in the Dominion case. Uh, it would seem to me that if they if they had this evidence and, and had been able to use it in their summary judgment motion, maybe they would have gotten a complete victory. You make the case in the complaint that it would be hard for Fox News executives not to know that these conversations took place. Ms. Grossberg was very forthcoming about recording things on a certain app on her phone. She would attach transcripts to her emails to hire ups at Fox. And you make the point that people in the control room heard some of these conversations, right? Can you, does, yeah, can yeah. your, would your, would you on behalf of your client be able to elaborate a little bit more on the culture in and around Fox News as it pertains to sensitive information like this? Sure. I mean, I, I would go one, one further and say that it's, it's, virtually impossible, if not actually impossible, that Fox News wasn't aware of it, uh, wasn't aware of these recordings, and wasn't aware that uh, there was, there was um, you know, uh, evidence being presented to, to Fox News through uh, its show host and Ms. Grossberg that was contrary to what was going on the air. I mean, uh, first of all, uh, Abby uh, made it a regular practice to use uh, this particular transcription uh, 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 software uh, anytime she uh, dealt with uh, pre-interviews with Ms. Bartiromo and made a regular practice of giving, uh, sending those transcriptions via Fox email to Ms. Bartiromo. So it is, uh, it strains credulity that and I, I believe, from what I heard, I haven't had the benefit of the transcript yet from today, but our local counsel reported to me that Fox News actually stood up and said that they weren't aware of these until uh, March the 20th, when they saw our corrected errata sheet in the Delaware case, and that's when they turned them over. Well, that, that really is almost impossible to believe, because uh, if they had just done a, random, uh, a, a regular search of the relevant, relevant emails, they would have come up with, uh, with uh, this evidence. Uh, I think they went so far as to ex try to excuse themselves by saying, well, first of all, it was on on Abby's personal phone as opposed to her company phone. Ms. Grossberg gave both phones over to Fox News twice to the four attorneys who, who drilled her for four days to coerce uh, basically incomplete and um, uh, self-serving testimony, and also put her in a position where she actually uh, came across in the transcript as someone who was either ignorant or not doing her job. Neither one of those uh, things are true, but that's the false light she was painted in. Is Ms. Grossberg going to testify in the Fox Dominion trial? Ms. Grossberg is ready to tell the truth in any appropriate form. Uh, she has already, um, you know, taken on the, uh, you know, the David versus Goliath battle of, of uh, challenging Fox News for uh, its attempt to, first of all, uh, treat her as something less than a, than a full human being simply because she's a woman, to subject her to a, a grossly toxic work environment, to, to uh, not afford her equal opportunity and promote the promotion she deserved to executive producer, and then to, to actually try to scapegoat her and try to hide information that, that exculpated her from having anything to do with, with this uh, big lie that was perpetrated. In fact, the, the, one of the tapes you played, uh, the question, the, uh, the voice on that tape is Ms. Grossberg's. She's the one that asks the question about the voting machines, because she actually uh, organized that interview in order to get to the bottom of what the truth was, because she was worried that perhaps um, Ms. Bartiromo was, was going too far or not fully informed in what she was producing. So that story never came out. What the Fox News uh, attorneys tried to get Ms. Ms. Uh, Grossberg to say during her deposition was that, you know, nothing ever fell between the cracks at, at Fox News. In fact, uh, Ms. Bartiromo's show, we argue because uh, Ms. Bartiromo and Ms. Grossberg were both women and they were subjected to a chauvinistic attitude. They were, they were characterized as being in a bubble and able to go wild, and Ms. Bartiromo was called all sorts of inf unflattering names by a number of the male executives at Fox News. But that show, which was, at the time, the number one rated show on weekends, uh, Ms. Bartiromo's weekend show, not only on Fox News, but all of Fox, uh, had 
uh, exactly one staff member, Ms. Grossberg. And yeah. although Ms. Grossberg repeatedly asked for, for additional, additional um, you know, support so that she could fully vet all of the counter uh, allegations and the, the warnings that were coming in from Dominion, she never received that. And in fact, um, was encouraged uh, to, you know, just continue to, you know, let Ms. Bartiromo, you know, say whatever she wants, because actually, uh, at the beginning, before they really got worried, once once legal liability was was, uh, you know, at their doorstep, uh, it was a ratings, you know, enhancer. They were concerned about losing. Uh, Losing audience from from the fact that they had called Arizona uh, early, I guess the first in, in the 2020 presidential election, and they yeah. needed ways to to actually come back and and um, and try to bump their ratings, and this was a way to do it. Well, so we allege. Abby Grossberg is now a central voice in all of this. Jerry Filipados, thank you so much, sir, for your time and thoughts this evening. Thank you, Alex. Thanks for having me on.